Okay. Welcome everybody to the first of many uh, webinars that I'll be hosting throughout um, this year. And yeah, so today we're going to go through my trading style and basically how I see the market. Um, so before we, before we start, I just want to ask you guys, who, who amongst you guys, if you can just put it in the chat um, uh, below, who amongst you guys currently use strategies like trend lines, breakouts, support and resistance, um, patterns, uh, you know, your head and shoulders, wedges, that kind of thing? Just by a raise of hands in the chat section. Only see one hand, guys. Only one hand. Two. Okay. All right. So, so basically, uh, I'm here to tell you guys that yeah, you can forget you can forget what you know on trend lines, um, breakouts, uh, head and shoulders. You know all these funny patterns and whatnot because. The style of trading that I use and how I see the market is, is completely different. We don't use any of that. Um, to me, none of that works. Um, it does not provide profitability. A three out of, uh, I mean, so four out of 10 times you might get it right. Uh, but what happens to you the remainder of the time, you know? Um, hence why I moved into SMC. So SMC is smart money concepts. Um, it is a very institutional um, style of trading, and it's 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 helped me obviously find profitability, along with everything else that I know in the markets. Um, so, like I said, those looking to trade SMC, forget about what you know, um, and and learn learn what um, SMC is and how to apply it in 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 the markets. So basically, I just want to go into this PDF. So I've got a PDF. I'm going to share with you guys now. Let's go to share screen. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, you can see. Okay, cool. So smart money concepts what is smart money so smart money is a capital that is being controlled or placed in the market by institutional investors central banks uh, hedge funds uh, financial uh, professionals so basically it is it is these big institutions um, that control the market remember retail traders cannot control the market in any way or form moves are done by institutions you can't, yeah, let me just accept everybody here. Um, yeah, so like I said, these are, these are uh, it, uh, what's it, moves that are controlled by institutions and hence why we trade with an institution rather than um, against them. Retail traders are always, always trading against the institution, which is why many a time you find that um you know you place a trade you place a buy and then it stops you out but then after it stops you out it runs into your direction have you ever asked yourself why it does that why did why did i get stopped out why did price hit my stop loss and then move into the direction i saw a double bottom or i saw a um i saw a uh what you call this uh double top or whatever pattern you saw and you got stopped out. Why did that happen? It's simply, it's simply because of the same, the same concept. Um, these are, so, so at these areas in the market, institutional step, institutions step in. And once they step in, your job is to obviously identify that the presence of these institutions and then obviously execute your trade accordingly, right? Um, so let's go into it. So smart money also refers to the force that influences and moves financial markets, often led by the actions of central banks. Smart money is invested on a much larger scale than retail. Like I said, retail investments are minimal. 
they're small. Your hundred, your hundred thousand uh, dollars, or your ten thousand dollars, or whatever, is not is is a fraction of what's actually been induced into the market uh, when it comes to um, banks and hedge funds, etc. So these are these are areas where um, aggressive buying and selling happens. So I want to just show you guys on, on the chart quickly. Um, let's just go here. Okay, so can you see areas like this? So areas, areas like this where we've got aggressive buying and selling in the market. Those are areas in which those are areas in which you you see a presence of institutions stepping in, right? So these areas become supply and demand zones in the market. Um, these these supply and demand zones control the market. You'll find that from these zones, price price always. So if I look at it here, right, um, I can see that that's a supply zone in that area. We can also we've also got a demand zone down there. So as you can see, price respects these areas in the market. So it comes back to, to mitigate these areas and then moves off from there. So think of it like ping pong. It's basically the same thing, right? When you've got, uh, when you're playing ping pong, you're eating the ball from one, one end to the other, right? Price does the same thing. So it moves from areas of demand to supply back and forth. So from one demand, to the to from from demand to supply and from supply to demand right and and those moves are controlled by the institutions so so yeah like like i showed you guys that's an area of supply on the top this is an area of demand at the bottom and you'll notice how price moves between the two right again aggressive you you see a u-turn in the market it's aggressive buying and selling that's occurring in the market at these areas so that would become your supply zone. So you've got a supply zone up there, price comes back, mitigates that supply zone, and then moves off, right? Again, you've got demand that was sitting down here. So you've got a demand area down there. And what happens? Price comes back to the demand and then moves off. So from demand to supply and from supply to demand, that's that's the only thing that you, you, need, to, you need to understand. Um, uh, in terms of uh, price movements, right? So if we go to um, back to the PDF, okay, so so where were we? Okay, so smart money is the reason behind sharp movements in the market. These are typical areas of U-turn. So where, like I showed you guys just now, these are areas in the market where price U-turns, right? Um, it is critical to identify where the smart money are involved in the markets as these are areas and zones that are of most interest to us when building a case towards your bias. So when, you, when you're when determining your bias for the day, you're obviously taking into account um, current areas of supply and demand because you know that those are the last areas where uh, where, where, where your institution has stepped into the market. So you, so you know, if you've already hit demand, where, where is price heading towards? It's heading towards the supply area. So that supply area can either hold or it can be flipped. And that's something that I teach a little bit more in detail in the, in the course. But um, you, you, for now, what I'm, what I'm showing you guys is how to understand what we see in the market. Um, okay, so... In this style of trading, we trade alongside the banks and institutions rather than against them, as typical traders tend to do. So knowing where the smart money is involved on the charts makes all the difference from being a profitable to an unprofitable trader. So <clears throat> if I go to the whiteboard, okay, I wanna show you guys this example, right? This is this is this is what what typically happens in the market. Okay, so at this area, we can see that we've got. So if we were downtrending here, right? If you're downtrending at that area, once price hits 
down here, we notice a sharp movement to the upside, right? This sharp movement to the upside or this U-turn in the market is where your bank has stepped in, right? Or your institution or your hedge fund or whatever, right? At these areas here, it's, it's, it's your point of interest. Why is it your point of interest? That demand area in the market or that area where an institution has stepped in has caused price to take out this last structure, right? So that becoming your change of character. So you've got a change of character, which is your shift in momentum between your um, between your your downtrend to your uptrend, right? So you notice that price has shown you intention of continuing to the upside, right? It's it's changed character now, and we're looking at a long bias. So at this area, your bank has stepped into the trade. So what happens at this area? So this this is the nitty gritty of it, right? Where at this area you will find that a bank will enter 100 million in the buy, for example, right? So they're placing 100 million on the buy and they're also placing a trade of minus 100 million on the sell. So they're placing, they're placing both a buy and a sell at that level, right? And, and the reason for this is because they, they're inducing liquidity into the market. So at that level, 100 million is placed on a buy, right? 100 million is also placed on a sell. Price will then shoot up, right? Or they might even place, they might even, they might even have 200 million on the buy, right? Because why? Let's, let's work off 200 million. So 200 million on the buy and 100 million on the sell inducing liquidity. Price will then push up to the upside, right? And from there, it'll take out previous structure. Once it's taken out previous structure, they close their trade at this level. So once price hits this level, it's taken out structure and you see the H4 or you see the H1 start to exhaust, right? So once you see exhaustion at that area, know that at this area, They've taken out, so they, they, their 200 million is now sitting plus 400 million profit, right? Or, so they've, they've collected this profit. They've taken out this profit and it, it, it's, it's banked. Price now starts to exhaust on the four hour at that area. That area there is now inducing sellers into the market, inducing retail traders into the market. So what you often find at those areas is here, you're going to start seeing your double tops. You're going to start seeing your wedges or whatever it is um, that that uh, that indicates to you that price is going to reverse now, right? Because we've taken out that structure. Everybody's everybody's hoping for uh, price to give you that higher low, right? They've 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 noticed the change in character and they're waiting for the higher low. So retail traders are going to, or scalpers are going to obviously try and trade the retracement. So you have the impulse, this was the correction or the retracement, retail traders are gonna try and trade it because they've seen the double top um, at that area and they were induced into the market. So this is, this is an institution manipulating you into taking that setup at that point. Why? Because they are sitting in a loss. Remember this minus 100 million down here. So this minus that sell 100 million that they placed at this, at this area uh, here. So that sell of 100 million is sitting here in minus 200 million loss, right? At that area, they're sitting at minus 200 million loss. So what happens is, you as a retail trader is looking at this double top and you're going to start selling for the retracement or the correction. Price will only come back down here, not because of this formation that you saw. They've induced you into the market. You're thinking it's going to sell, right? It will come back to this demand area only to let them out on this 100 million buy. Uh, sorry, 100 million sell. So at this area, they're breaking even on the sell. They know that the move is still up, is still, is still a continuation to the upside. And at this area, they're going to continue showing you that price is going to 
sell. They're looking, they will throw you with that engulfing candle. Price will start to wick, wick in this area. You, um, where it's trying to break through, you'll get a wick to the up, big wick to the upside. Um, you will see everything relating to a sell at this area here. Why? Because they, they're trying to throw you off what's actually happening in the market. So at that area, they break even on the sell. They know the price that that price still has to continue to the upside. They, they already know that. Why? Because of this. We have the change of character on the left. So what happens there is at that area, they place the buy again for another 200 million and they ride the wave up. You are sitting in a cell because you're seeing that engulfing candle that sweeps down there and you're looking at that as a, as a um, support area. In your terms, you look at it as a support area and then price breaks that support and it gives you the engulfing candle, right? And you start to sell. Once you sell there, price reverses on you and moves to the upside, right? That's, that's basically what happens in these, in these, in these um, scenarios. So any, any questions on what I've, what I've uh, got so far or what I've done so far? Guys, is everyone clear? Okay. All right. So, so that's that's what happens um, at supply and demand areas. Likewise, the same thing happens at a at a demand uh, at a supply area. So you'll find that at a at a um, supply area. You're going to have, um, obviously, they're going to place both buys and sells. And once price reaches, uh, gets back to the to the supply area and mitigates the supply, it will continue in its track to the downside. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanted to touch on is the price cycle. So let's just clear this. Just clear. Uh, wait. Okay, so what is the price cycle? So, so there's this four imp important phases that you need to know in the price cycle, right? So one is your consolidation. Number two, your Expansion, number three, your retracement, and number four is your reversal. Okay, so you've got four phases that you need to know in the price cycle. It's number one, your consolidation area, number two, your expansion, number three, your retracement, and number four, your reversal. So if we look at it, on on the chart or well, before we get to the chart let me show you what it looks like here so this is the cycle in which price follows on any time frame any any asset class whatever you're looking at if you can ident identify it once you can identify it a million times thereafter so you will find that you will have a what do we know this area as a consolidation, right? So that's your consolidation area. After a consolidation, you get the expansion phase. So this area now becomes the expansion phase. And then you get the retracement. Your retracement is the mitigation of that supply. So that's your retracement phase. And then, and then you get the um, reversal. So that's your reversal. Entry up there, stop loss above, right? What happens then from this cycle, so that's one cycle, right? From this cycle, price will then give you, will then, will then, um, let's do this, will then enter another consolidation, right? And what happens now? 
you get the expansion that's the consolidation expansion retracement reversal that's the next the next cycle that happens so <clears throat> this is this happens everywhere on the chart guys if you go if you go um to let's show you on this chart here so i go back here and let's get it here right so <clears throat> Okay, so notice notice what we're looking at, right? So let's let's do this. Um, this was a trade that we actually caught in the week. Exactly the same. I've sent the signal. I've sent the the setup as well. It's exactly the same concept. What do you have here in this area? What can everybody see? You can see a consolidation, right? That's your consolidation phase. So if we mark that out, we know that this is consolidation phase. That's the consolidation phase, right? You go down to your 30 minute, whichever time frame, um, right? You you identify your area of supply or demand. So you, you identify your area of supply or demand, right? Now you've got, you see this phase here, there's your, expansion phase that becomes your expansion phase and what happens after that you've got let's change this color uh, okay, then you've got the retracement phase that occurs thereafter. So that becomes a retracement. And then you've got this area, which is your reversal. It's as simple as this. You just need to know how to identify it. And, and from a simple concept like this, this trade actually hit more than 8,000 pips of profit. Again, four plus above the zone. Same scenario like what I told you guys, a bank will enter. So at this area, aggressive selling happens, right? So you know that, the, that an institution has stepped into the market at this area. So the institution has stepped in you all you're waiting for now is price to come back and mitigate that area of supply or demand once it mitigates that area your stop loss is above the zone your your entry is as we touch but i've got a refined entry as well which we i discuss uh, um, which i teach in, in my course to my students it will be unfair if i have to teach that here but basically that's what you that's what you're looking for institution has stepped in so they placed that um they placed that what you call this um 500 million on the sell at this point and the buy so they were still sitting in this at this point they were sitting plus 500 profit so plus 500 million profit So they were sitting at oh, plus 500 million profit. But at the same time, they were also sitting in minus 500 loss. So what happens then? Your, your lower time frame is now going to start showing you signs off. Can you see? 
look at what it did. What if if you know candlesticks? This is a morning star, guys. So you've got this bearish candle, you've got this gravestone, and you've got this uh, engulfing candle here. So these three candles form your morning star. So what happens at that point? They induced buyers here. They 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 enticing buyers into the market. Buyers are stepping in because they see this big morning star. That morning star is for like uh, almost two thousand pips big. That's how big that morning star is. So at that point, everybody's buying. But it's not. And why are they buying? Why? Because look, if you look left, what do you see here? You see a support in the market, right? So you've got resistance there. Price broke out and it came back to retest. Everybody is buying. Everybody, it's still bullish. If you follow, if you follow your higher, higher time frame structure, price is still bullish, right? So you can see we've got higher highs, higher lows. That's the last, last higher low, um, higher low there. Next one here. So you, you're still looking at bullish structure, but why did price reverse? It's the same, same concept. Price comes back to this um, so-called support area, resistance turn support, gave you the morning start, that area. Everybody's hope, expecting this to buy. All retail traders are buying, but it's only buying to tap into the supply area to let them out on the sell that they've taken at that area. So they, they took the sell up here and the buy up here. Their profits were 500 million. Their loss was minus 500. And then at this area again, we <clears throat> we mitigate and they get out of the, they, they close the sell at break even. And then the real move happens thereafter. Bang. This was, like I said, 8,000 pip of a, of a drop. 7,800 pips. So yeah, that's that's the price cycle, guys. Um, if you if you okay, and then one more thing that I wanna wanna touch on with you guys is so the last thing I wanna touch is your bullish or bearish order flow. So okay, so when we talk about bullish or bearish order flow, right? Everybody generally starts to think that. Um, so everybody knows order flow to be such, right? So you get the expectation versus the reality. This is your expectation, right? Again, that's your expectation of bullish order flow. But price does not always move as clean cut as this where you've got multiple break of structures, you've got the high lows, and you've got confirmed higher highs in the market. Um, price continues, you know, as, as we all learned in theory, you know, um, high, 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 low, high, 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 low. It doesn't, it doesn't always follow this sort of um, uh, structure to say. So this is the expectation, right? So you expect that, but the reality is, you will see that price price actually moves like this, and I'll show you why. Okay, so you'll find that price actually moves like this, right? And, and it does not flow as such. Why? Because along the way, price has to stop for, for fuel, right? It can't make a move from, from here, for example, to there. So if that was, if this was 15,000 and that was 16,000, the price level, price cannot move from here to there in one in one movement right it's got to stop along the way to collect fuel right and what is the fuel behind this it's stop losses stop losses liquidity um that is what price needs to collect in order to give it fuel because liquidity moves price liquidity is the driving force behind, behind price um it's got to collect the liquidity and then push um to the next level 
um, a, a famous line that I like to tell everybody is if so when you place a trade or when you're about to place a trade, if you do not know where the liquidity is, then you are the liquidity. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Um, and yeah, if you think about that, it makes it makes real sense. So, so <clears throat> looking at it, what happens here is you you have identified that this is the last structure in the market. So that was the higher low, right? So on your higher time frames, that was a higher high. You had the higher high up here, right? The higher low was down here at that area. You then had a break of structure at this point, and it gave you a higher high up there. But what happens here, price starts breaking structure to the downside. Can you see? At these levels, price takes out structure to the downside. And everybody will now think, oh, price is reversing. It's changed character here. It's taken out this low in the market. And they're looking to short the market, but not realizing that everything you see from here to here is the range in the market. So price can do anything in this range for as long as it holds that structure down there. If we hold structure down here, we are still bullish, right? But if we breach the structure down here, we are bearish. And, and this is preliminary sellers in the market. Why does this happen? They're creating liquidity. So everybody that's selling at that point, liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. So selling at that point, and then gives you this double bottom here and price then moves to the next so that becomes the higher low because it's higher than that low and it gives you a new higher high up there with a new higher low down here so everything in between here and here is the range so no matter what it does in between as long as it maintains that structure it's uh, still bullish so that is how they induce liquidity in the market in order to drive price higher right um any questions guys nobody's let me try and unmute everybody shakil on uh, what time frame would we follow or other people, mm -hmm. I mean, I know what time frame to follow. Uh, what time frame would traders who want to learn um, how to trade effectively know, like, for example, from the first, the second higher high, price moves down and it breaks structures in lower time frames. So what low, what mm -hmm. lower time frames would that be? So you're referring, so, so let me just get that uh, question. So you're referring to this area here, for example. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Right. So, so that that can happen on your. So, if you if you've analyzed your structure on your one hour, right, you'll find that sometimes your one hour and your four hour will share the same structural points, right, and the lower time frames like your M thirty, your M fifteen, etc., will give you these these break of structures on the lower time frames and a small downtrend that occurs on the lower time frames right however you need to obviously understand your range using your FIB etc and understand where price is expected to retrace to right and and know that if you if you're trading your one hour um, or you're on your one hour then that's the structure that price needs to break out of in order to confirm that you are trending to the downside does that answer you You got? Yeah, 100%. I got it. Okay, cool. So, so there is no specific time frame that I, I focus on um, completely. It is I, I, when I analyze, I start off on the weekly every day. I look at the weekly chart, I look at the weekly candle, I look at the daily candle, and then I look on to the four hour, the one hour. So, I, I analyze on all time frame. My analysis and my bias is based on all time frames. Um, and I, I, you got to understand your higher time frame structure um, in order to obviously uh, understand your retracements and which areas to target and you know that sort of thing anybody else any questions i want to open up the mic to everybody
Guys, nobody's asking any questions. Shakir. Yeah. Um, Sorry, who's okay. this? Let me just... Um... Wasim. Okay. Um, how can you properly distinguish between a change of character and mm -hmm. liquidity building? What would you mean by that? For instance, um, you said earlier, most of the time when we build liquidity is just to take off uh, stop orders, stop losses, etc. all of those things. Um, how can we properly know when a change of character uh, takes place? So, so... Like, like I said, you gotta, you got to understand your... Let's just do a quick scenario, right? So, okay, so for example, right? You're talking about something like, um, like this. So if you see price take out this, this area here, right? Correct? Yeah, so you're yeah, looking yeah. At it, so it takes out this area as, and you, you're thinking this is a change of character. Because it broke the structure here, but if so, price won't do this on the higher time frames, right? So the higher the time frame, the less the lie, right? So so the less the lies, meaning meaning it's exactly that. So the higher time frames are not going to lie to you. If you do see this here on the lower time frame, so if you're looking at this on the lower time frame, that lower time frame is going to give you candles below that area, below this character this change of character. So it's going to give you candle, but your higher time frame is going to give you just a wick down there. But the structure on the higher time frame will still be held. Do you understand? So you'll see the wick below. That's the wick collecting liquidity, right? And that is your candle that still maintains structure at that point. Does that answer you? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, bro. Anybody else? Shakil? Yeah. So with regards to the price cycle, if like if you mm -hmm. go back to the uh, the screen where you have like the 500 million uh, loss mm -hmm. and 500 um, million profit. Yeah, this one. Um, Can you see it? No. Okay, one second. Uh, let me just share that there. Okay, can you see it now? Yeah, so now like you see the consolidation phase, right? Mm -hmm. Now, at that expansion point where the, the, the what's it called? The, the industries, or well, what, you, what, what do you call, call it? Institutions, institutions, institutions yeah, hedge funds. start putting the, the 500 million then um, uh, position and they push mm. the market down. Then mm. you get your retracement. At the retracement point where you see in your morning star, will you mm. put a scalp to uh, buy scalp and this? No, I, I no, that's the, so. So basically, I don't, I don't say it like that. Um, it's not. I've got a set of rules that I follow. I follow the ten. So if I see a change in character to the downside. That is the trend that I'm trying that I'm doing. I will not try and scalp the buy um, or, or the sell for that matter if it was a if it was a buy movement, right? So I will wait. You gotta wait for price to come to you. Don't try and catch it on the reversal and try and catch the retracement and you know you wait for price to come to you. And that's that's just how I follow. I stick to my rules like that. So you want to place a reversal at the reversal point, you'll place your trade for that. Correct, it's, correct. It's, uh, that's that's the area I'm looking to place the trade, um, my, my trade at. I'm not looking, yes, it will move a thousand pips or whatever as, as a retracement move, but there's no telling that price will still, you know, it, it, will, it, will come, it will come back all the way at that point. No, take what's confirmed, basically. So if it does come back there, I know that's a confirmed move. That's going to happen, you know. Okay. Um, so yeah, you won't feel bad like, oh, if we just missed a thousand per move. Or... No, the opportunities are there every day in the market. 
opportunities are your job is not not to call every trade stick to your rules and 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 obviously uh you find that as when you stick to your rules um you'll find that your win ratio will then be like 8 out of 10 7 out of 10 you know you, you'll be hitting 9 out of 10 even but the times that you break your rules and you try and trade against the trend that's when you're going to you're going to get you know shafted basically mm. I, i've learned that the hard way um hence why i, I only stick to to my set of rules okay thanks you too anyone else Guys, any questions quickly? Because we'll uh, if nobody's got any questions, then we'll we'll end it at that. Mm. Okay, cool, guys. I hope you guys found some insight in this, and yeah. Um, Catch Thanks everybody. Good. Yeah, I'll catch everybody on cheers, the cheers. on Have next next our next one. Sure. Cool. Take it easy. Thanks.